Hello everyone, welcome back. Welcome to my channel if you're new. I'd like to thank everyone for viewing, liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please don't forget to hit the thumbs up on your way out if you enjoy the video. It really does help my channel, but more importantly, it circulates the video so that others that need to see the messages and, and hear the messages do, do get them. Um, I want to remind you that it is a general reading. It's definitely going to completely resonate for some of you but not all of you. So take what does resonate, that's yours. Leave the rest behind. Normally, a uh, moon reading is done with your rising sign, okay? But feel free to check your sun and your moon sign as well because as it turns out, those seem to resonate sometimes for others as well. Now, this is um, a new moon in Scorpio, but it's also a super new moon, okay? And the key energies for this moon are going to be escape, outrageousness, sex, and awakenings. And Yasmin Boland says that, like they say on the radio, the hits just keep coming. This month, even before we go into the next eclipse season, we have the new moon in deep, dark Scorpio, closely aligned with the outrageous maverick planet Uranus. In other words, the skies are electric around the November new moon. If at the end of this year you feel like you're skidding towards the finishing line, that's why. So this will have been a very challenging year for many, thanks to all the jarring alignments. And we're nearly at the end of it, thank God. Because it, you know, for a lot of us, it's been one of those years. So was last year. So all that remains is A, being grateful for all the good in your life, and B, asking yourself if you've learned the lessons that this year has been trying to teach you. And if you're feeling stuck, this new moon really does have your back. Being as close to Uranus as it is, it's going to be like electric shock therapy that rips off the old all of a sudden. And even a tad thoughtlessly. Sudden changes and turnarounds are possible now, so don't write off 2021 if it doesn't seem to be ending as you'd like it to. Instead, use the power surge of this lunation to make bold choices, decisions, and intentions. And as you might know, manifesting is not just about wishing, it's also about taking follow-up action. So think about what you can do to make your dreams become real. And with Uranus active now, ingenu ingenuity and individuality will be applauded. And do you need to stop judging someone? Maybe yourself. Print out a picture of someone you've judged and set it on your altar or a table. Light a pink candle and then visualize love coming from your heart chakra and enveloping them. Ask them for forgiveness. Okay. So I think that is everything. We're going to look at these cards here, the Moonology cards. We have, of course, the new moon. A new start is coming. Yay! <laughs> we all like those. Who doesn't like a new start, especially if the year's been bad? And then we have emotions are running high, super moon. Yeah, the super moon, it just, um, it's not a bigger moon, it's just, it's closer to the earth. And so it looks bigger and it's brighter and it also has a much bigger effect on all of us. But it's a new moon. So it's about new beginnings, it's about exciting new ways, right? It's not like uh, a super full moon or anything, that would be horrific. Uh, new moon in Scorpio, work through your fears. Okay, this could be uh, this could be a very interesting new moon for everybody. So let's get into doing the readings for the zodiac signs. Okay, Taurus, just to recap your full moon reading in Aries, you need to find balance or needed to find balance at that point in time between work and rest. Okay, because you were a little bit in a fog or you had your head in the clouds, however you want to look at it, but um, you weren't seeing clearly, obviously, and spirit needed you to see clearly. 
to see that you needed to release whatever it was you needed to release so that you could have the realization or the aha moment of why you had to release it, okay? It had something to do with uh, a loss in love. Spirit was picking up the ball that you were dropping and trying to move you forward because you were being, being moved forward toward a very special soulmate, possibly a twin flame, okay? And you were asked to have faith in this situation. Okay, so now we're going to move into the new moon. Okay, Taurus, let's get into your uh, new moon in Scorpio reading. But first, I want to let you know what house this moon is in for you. And it's in your seventh house. And this house is all about your love life. And if you remember, if you watched it, your full moon, and I just gave you the recap, but if you remember your full moon reading, if you watched it, I will link it up above if you didn't. It was all about letting go of a lost love. Now this new moon, it's in your love zone this month. And that means that you're getting the chance to either reinvigorate um, a current relationship or just reinvigorate your love life, period. So if you're single, this is the perfect time for you to move on from old loves, which is what you were being asked to do with the full moon, right? Release it and let it go. Now, if you're attached you you already know the importance of keeping your relationship fresh so this new moon is going to bring in a fresh energy and a chance for you to think about some of the things that you and your partner can do this month in order to do just that with your relationship right okay so we're going to start off with some queen of the moon oracle cards goodness Taurus you watched me shuffle that deck you're going to want to watch your full moon reading because that full moon in Aries that is in play until the 19th of November okay because you've got card three here which is all about your evolution and your growth and it's the waxing crescent one and it's realization you had this you had this card in your full moon reading it's going to be interesting to see the timing of it where it sits in this row up here once we get all the cards out because it was it was third in your full moon reading interesting now you have card 32 which breaks down to a five it's all about change it's also all about uh, it can represent conflict inner conflict, outer conflict. But for me, fives are mostly about change. This is the egg moon and it's about trust. And in your full moon reading, you were so, so asked many times to trust and have faith. And this, it's really hard to see. I'm not even going to go there, but I want you to look at the egg. And like, I think there's two people hugging in that egg. What do you see? Kissing? I don't know. It's kind of hard to see, but there are definitely two sets of arms there. So again, your full moon reading was about you being moved towards your uh, very special soulmate. And now this is kind of looking the same way. Okay, card 14 breaks down to a five. Again, it's about change. You have some big changes coming, Taurus. Waxing give us five. <laughs> it's a five. And it's focus. And what I'm hearing with this card is even though it feels like there's a lot going on around you, look at her. 
she's not able to breathe because the water has now come up over her nose. She's got her eyes closed because it's continuing to rise. She's got a butterfly on her forehead. She's got the sun or the moon or something trying to shine through into this bubble that she's in. And I just feel like there's a lot going on and that's how you feel probably. Some of you, even though Spirit's asking you to focus. And in, um, help me out here, Spirit. Because of everything that's going on, Spirit wants you to really focus. Okay. Ooh, very cool card. 36 breaks down to a nine, which is tying up loose ends, getting ready to close out things because you've got an ending coming so you can have that new beginning. This is the green corn moon and it's all about patience. Isn't that cool? Wow. Interesting. Okay. So now I'm going to give you the timing of each of these cards and put them in order so we know exactly what the messages are here. Okay, so um, the first card actually is not the realization card, even though that is um, this new moon, basically. It's November 5th, but it's the patience card. And this is a green corn moon, which was September 20th of this year. So whatever happened September 20th or around September 20th, the end of September, basically, you were being asked to have patience. Keep moving forward, but have patience with something, whatever it was. If this is about something that took place in and around on and or around the 20th of September okay and then because spirit wanted to bring this realization to you November 5th around November 5th be patient for this realization this aha moment And then the next card you have in order here is the focus card because the waxing gibbous five is November 16th. So about, not quite, but about almost two weeks after the new moon, you're going to gain focus and it's going to take place because of the realization. So this was in the third position in your full moon reading. It's now backed up here to the second position. So be patient because this is coming in, is what Spirit is saying to you. Now this trust card, this egg moon, this egg moon is April 16th of next year. Now also in your full moon reading, in I believe it was in the extended part though, you got the card Winter's End. Now this being that um, it's April 16th, that is spring for the Northern Hemisphere, right? And it's all about having trust. Trusting that this is going to take place. You just have to be patient. Just be patient. It might it might not take place until the spring, but it is coming. So trust. Realize that things are not, I'm hearing things are not as they seem. So I don't know what's going on in your world, but things are not as they seem. So focus. Focus on what it is that you want. Manifest what you want. Visualize what it is that you want. Try and stay positive. And trust because it is coming whatever this is for you Taurus your twin flame your happiness your bliss your finances whatever it is you basically have until well somewhere between now and and spring 
some of you it may not be that long. It might not take till the spring. We're going to get some more cards, so we're going to get cards here from the Luna Somnia deck. I want to kind of bring this together a little bit better for us as far as messages go. Okay, so your first card out on top of patience and realization. You have the Queen of Swords. She is a very patient queen. She doesn't play games, though. There's no game going on here, either. This is not about game playing. This is about straightforward, honest-to-goodness truth. Just seeing things as they are. But be patient because things are not as they seem right now. But they will be. You will have the clarity. Okay? Now, on top of the realization and the focus card, you had this in the full moon reading too. The five of wands. This was all about picking your battles. Remember? Remember? Choose your battles wisely is the message here. Focus on what's really important. And this is not. Whatever this is. In your full moon reading, this was in regards to you feeling um, abandoned by somebody. And losing out in love. And spirit does not want you focusing on that. Focus on what's important, what you do want. Now on focus and trust, yeah, you have the high priestess. Trust that everything is going to work out as it should, when it should, for your highest good. You are being transformed. You're being um, ascended, raised up. You will have that knowing. The secret, this is about secrets too. The secret is going to be coming to light. Okay? You will be enlightened. Absolutely. Okay, so the bottom of this deck now, page of wands. The page of wands, pages are messengers, but this page, he always brings good news. Always. So you don't have to worry about that. The same thing, I think it was in your extended from the, the previous full moon. You're going to have, no, maybe it was in the beginning, a positive outcome. There is a positive outcome in this. You don't have to worry about that. Okay, now we're going to get some Gaia Oracle cards. Okay, so on top of the Queen of Swords and the Five of Wands, you have card number four. This is all about commitment, union, reunion, stability, your foundation. And it is the dream. Something is revealed. Insight. Breakthrough. Yeah, because, see, this sits right here. It's on the Queen of Wands, or the Queen of Swords and the Five of Wands. It's right below the realization. Something is revealed. So be patient. Something is going to be revealed. Okay? The secret will come to light. So now on top of the five of wands and the high priestess, you have card number two, which is duality, partnerships, relationships, moonlight goddess, repressed emotions, healing, and reflection. The only way you're going to heal this is to stop battling it, right? Okay, Island Time Wellness. Okay, so on top of the dream and moonlight goddess, you've got girl talk. <laughs> T 
time with friends, moving on, happily single, living in the moment, but having fun. Right? Again, you're kind of getting similar messages here that you got in the full moon reading. Release, let go, move on. Be happy being single for the time being. Live in the moment and really enjoy your life. Have fun. Spirit has got some really good stuff coming in for you. You just have to be patient. Just a little while longer. Okay, now we're going to get a Just As Oracle card. that you're thinking about doing. Go for it. Those of you that, like I said, have been thinking about doing something or getting something or saying something, whatever it is, go for it. Okay, now we're going to get Oh, a synchronicity card. Look at it. It's, it's, I want to point out, it's right below the dream card. Go for the dream. Okay. Mm. Here's your card. Spirit, flip this one out. Twin Flame Union is close. So when I created this deck, I'd been seeing a bunch of numbers randomly, but quite frequently. And I wanted to know what they meant. So I asked my guides, whatever they gave me, it got put on the cards. About half of the deck is numbered, but I kept seeing 1111 all the time. And so if you start seeing 1111 from this point forward, it means your twin flame union is close. Okay. It can also mean you're about to go through another awakening, but now that you've seen this card in this reading, now when you see 1111, this is what it means for you. Okay. okay now we're going to get a Whispers of Love for you. Card 14, it breaks down to a five. So again, change. You have a lot of fives here. You had a fair number of fives in your full moon reading too. Ask for help. What do you really need, Taurus? Be willing to accept support. Don't try and do it all on your own. You don't have to. And just because you can't or, or don't take it on, your, on yourself doesn't mean you're weak. If that's what you're thinking. Okay, Taurus. Um, I'm going to ask your guides and spirit what it is that you can do or need to do, be, think, and or feel to move through this, to release what it is that you need to release so that you can have that realization, so that you can have that aha moment and shift into that place where you're ready for your twin flame union to take place, okay? We're gonna do that in the extended. So click on the title of this video, it'll drop down my description box. That's where you'll find the link to your extended as well as all the decks that I used here, okay? So those of you that are going over, I will see you over there. Those of you that are not, I love you guys and I will see you next time.